Hello and welcome to Baijus IAS, presenting to you the daily quiz for 21st of December 2021. Let us begin and have a look at the first question for today. Which of the given statements with respect to Integrated Child Development Services Scheme is or are correct? The beneficiaries of the program are children in the age group of 0 to 6 years, pregnant women and lactating mothers. It is a centrally sponsored scheme under the Ministry of Women and Child Development. It aims to provide preschool non-formal education to children between the age group of 3 to 6 years. What is the context? We've taken up this particular question because there is a reference to the ICDS scheme in today's PIB. Say this Integrated Child Development Services Scheme is a scheme that provides nutritional meals, preschool education, primary health care, immunization and health checkup to children under the age of 6 years and their mothers. So who are the beneficiaries? Children in the age group of 0 to 6 years, pregnant women as well as lactating mothers. So statement number 1 here becomes correct. So now we know that the scheme is under the Ministry of Women and Child Development, right? And it is a centrally sponsored scheme. Therefore, statement number 2 also becomes correct. What are the services that are provided under the scheme? As we already discussed, provision of supplementary nutrition, ensuring immunization and health checkup are the services provided under the scheme. And in addition to improving the nutritional and health status of children, this particular scheme provides for preschool non-formal education as well. And this is provided to children in the age group of 3 to 6 years, making statement 3 also correct. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option A, 1, 2 and 3. Now, here's a task for you for today. Let us know the difference between a centrally sponsored scheme and a central sector scheme. Write your answers in the comment section below. Moving on to question number 2. RLC is situated between which of these two countries? Option A, Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. Option B, Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. Option C, Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. Option D, Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. What is the context? This article in the PIB today talks about India-Central Asia Dialogue. So this India-Central Asia Dialogue is a ministerial level dialogue that is held between India and the Central Asian countries. And these Central Asian countries are Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. Therefore, we've taken a map-based question on this region. So, if we have a look at the map here, we see that the Aral Sea, which is an endoric lake, lies between Kazakhstan in the north and Uzbekistan in the south. So, the right answer to our question would be option B, Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan. Now, let us take up question number 3. Panex 21 is being held among the member countries of which of the following organizations? Option A. Bay of Bengal Initiative for Multi-Sectoral Technical and Economic Cooperation or BIMSTEC. Option B. South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation or SARC. Option C. Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN. Or Option D. BRICS. Why this question? This article in the Hindu newspaper today talks about Panex 21. This Panex 21 is a humanitarian assistance and disaster relief exercise. And this exercise which is being held in Pune is being held among the BIMSTEC countries. That is Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Myanmar and Thailand. So the primary aim of Panex 21 is to review the humanitarian assistance and disaster relief mechanism of BIMSTEC countries and also help these countries in streamlining their response strategy to any disasters, especially in the backdrop of the ongoing pandemic. Its target also involves promoting joint planning and building regional cooperation to deal with natural disasters. Coming back to the question, the right answer to our question would be option A, BIMSTEC. Moving on to question number 4. The Kapila campaign was launched by the Government of India to Option A. Ensure universal availability of COVID-19 vaccines, especially to vulnerable and low-income countries. Option B. Increase awareness regarding protection and exploitation of intellectual property and provide funding support to promote filing of intellectual property in higher education institutions. Option C. 
prevent and stop the growing incidence of cyber violence and sexual abuse faced by women in India. Option D, ensure integrated water resource management, helping to conserve water, minimize wastage and ensure more equitable distribution. What is the context? This article in the PIB today has a reference to the Kapila campaign that was launched in October 2020. See, Kapila is the acronym for Kalam Program for Intellectual Property Literacy and Awareness Campaign. And the answer to our question lies in the acronym itself. So if you know the acronym, you know what the answer is. But let me tell you more about this campaign. This campaign, that is Kapila campaign, was launched in the year 2020 in order to generate awareness about protection and usage of IP rights or the intellectual property rights. So the government through this campaign intends to spread awareness and importance of patenting and inventions. What this campaign will do is facilitate the colleges as well as higher educational institutions to encourage more and more students to file patents. And in addition to this, in order to help these higher educational institutions to file for intellectual property rights, Kapila campaign will also provide funding support. Coming back to the question, so the right answer to our question would be option B. Now let us take up a previous year question from prelims paper 2017. Consider the following statements. In tropical regions, Zika virus disease is transmitted by the same mosquito that transmits dengue. Number two, sexual transmission of Zika virus disease is possible. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? The Zika virus disease is caused by a virus that is transmitted primarily by Aedes mosquitoes, mainly Aedes aegypti in tropical and subtropical regions. So this Aedes aegypti mosquito is the same mosquito that transmits dengue, chikungunya as well as yellow fever. So the first statement is correct. It is transmitted by the same mosquito that transmits dengue. Coming to statement number two. Zika virus, as we discussed earlier, is primarily transmitted to mosquitoes, but it can be transmitted through sexual contact. It can be transmitted through transfusion of blood as well as blood products and also by organ transplantation. It can also be transmitted from the mother to the fetus during pregnancy. So statement number two is also correct. Therefore, the right answer to our question would be option C, both one and two. Now let us take up the fact of the day for today which is multi-state cooperatives. But first, let us have a look at the context. The Union Home and Cooperation Minister has said that the centre will amend the Multi-State Cooperative Societies Act or MSCS Act of 2002. So let us understand one by one as to what these multi-state cooperatives are, what MSCS Act of 2002 is and what loopholes the government intends to plug through these amendments. See, cooperatives or cooperative societies fall under the state subject under the 7th schedule of Indian constitution. But there are many cooperative societies like the milk unions, societies for sugar or even cooperative banks whose members and the area of operation is spread across more than just one state, say Maharashtra and Karnataka. Such cooperative societies are called as multi-state cooperatives and the law that was passed to govern these cooperatives was called as the Multi-State Cooperative Societies Act of 2002. These cooperatives draw their membership from both the states and they are therefore registered under the MSCS Act. Here's a quick fact. Maharashtra has the highest number of such multi-state cooperative societies. So now there are a few conditions for the functioning of a multi-state cooperative. Number one, their board of directors has representation from all the states that they operate in. So in this case, there is representation from Maharashtra and there is also representation from Karnataka as well. And the administrative and financial control of these societies is with the central registrar. And the law makes it very clear that no state government official can wield any control on these cooperative societies. But in case of single state cooperative societies, such administrative and financial control rests with the state registrar. So now, what are the issues with these multi-state cooperative societies? The exclusive control of central registrar was meant to allow smooth functioning. The act ensures that there is no interference of state authorities, right? So they can function in multiple states, but this has created issues. Why? 
For a single state registered cooperative society, there are checks and balances at multiple layers to ensure transparency in financial and administrative processes. But these layers do not exist in case of multi-state societies. Instead, here, the board of director has control of all the finances and administration. Also, unlike state cooperatives which have to submit multiple reports to the state registrar, multi-state cooperatives need not do it. And another issue is that the central registrar can only allow inspection of societies under special conditions. And these inspections can happen only after prior intimation to such multi-state cooperative societies. And this has created multiple issues, that is the issue of lack of transparency. So there have been instances across the country when credit societies have launched Ponzi schemes. And this has been done taking advantage of these loopholes. These Ponzi schemes are high-risk schemes that target small and medium holders by luring them for high returns. So now to check and prevent these cases of fraud, the centre intends to bring about amendments to the Act so that there is better and transparent governance and also accountability. And the centre is also looking at options of using technology to bring in transparency in the functioning of these multi-state cooperatives. That is all for today. Thank you for being with us. Keep watching and keep learning.